It's recording. So uh, the summer kind of got inundated with uh, different things, family, people visiting, so it didn't feel very restful, but I think we've caught up since then. Uh, another thing was I was really struggling with my role, uh, uh, local, global, and I, I really feel like in the last four or five weeks I'm at peace with what, I, what I'm doing. Um, and a lot of that has to do with just making a decision. Uh, we're going to spend one week a uh, month traveling with the Sundells next year. And then the rest of the time we're going to spend at home focused on San Antonio. And so that just making that decision has freed me up big time. And what was our Well, Troy, you were at the last Iron and Iron in Austin. Uh, I don't know if you remember that when we were with you and Grace and okay. And mm -hmm. we were like super bummed out. So this should be like 180. Mm -hmm. Like we're very happy to be in this iron on iron and excited <laughs> about what God's doing. Yeah. <laughs> so fortunately <laughs> mm -hmm. we will hopefully have a different tone than some of our other past iron on irons. Yeah. We sound like Eeyore in yeah. Austin. Oh, I was, I think I was in almost in tears and I rarely cry. <laughs> we're all doomed. We're oh all going to die. You don't do it. never <laughs> work. So we're feeling much better. And a lot of that is uh, perspective and managing expectations, but we'll show you some things. The other thing is God is just doing some crazy stuff and, we asked him to flip the switch and he did. So we're like super excited. So yeah, that was yeah. where we were with the last iron on iron. Okay, so uh, that's really encouraging. Sounds like you did your, uh, made some decisions and, and did your, and obeyed God and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, how is abiding going in terms of uh, quantity and quality? Well, let me go first because there's no way I can compare. <laughs> um, know. So, you know, we're kind of in a special category because we're retired. And so we've got a lot of um, discretionary time. <clears throat> but I feel like, uh, you know, like for me, I'm reading through the Old Testament Psalms twice, New Testament twice in a year. And um, that's going really well. So daily a uh, couple chapters or, or more in the Old Testament, a psalm, and then a reading in the New Testament. And um, <clears throat> uh, usually in the evenings, you know, I'm walking around the neighborhood just getting exercise and praying and engaging with neighbors if they're out. Mm -hmm. And um, so I feel like, you know, quality is good. Quantity I could probably do more, but who doesn't say that they could probably do more? <laughs> mm -hmm. But I feel like, you know, this at this stage of my life where I have more freedom, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm uh, doing pretty well. I, that, I, I don't want it to sound arrogant, but I don't feel like, oh, I need to do more, I need to do more, you know, so. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I uh, usually, for the Word, I'm reading through the uh, Old Testament, looking for leadership um, pointers, tips, and uh, I'm in Psalms now, and I just started that, and I can't remember. I started the Old Testament in June, May. Anyway, so I'm trying to go through as fast as I can just to get saturated. And I'm reviewing my verses that I have memorized over the years. And I just finished uh, memorizing John chapter 13, and I'm on 14 now. And that's where the real quality is coming out of memorizing those chapters. I really feel like Jesus is speaking to me strongly as I'm memorizing those chapters. So it's been very good. 
prayer time is uh, generally an hour in the morning and an hour at night. And uh, that's very consistent. I often think with my prayer time, I hope God is enjoying this as much as I am because my prayer time is very eclectic. I have a prayer list. And I do that in the morning, but in the evening, I just invite God into my daydreams. And it's all about what he's doing in, in my life and other people's lives. And I just have that discussion, and it's rich. So I, I enjoy both times, but I really enjoy the evenings. So. Uh, thanks. I'm going to ask you this one follow-on question there. Um, can you think of a way uh, that God has spoke to you and you responded in obedience and abided that way in the last month or so? Oh, yeah. Or the last day, whatever. That happens, uh, yeah, like weekly for me. <laughs> um, I felt like we did a training a couple Saturdays ago and did the 411, um, which, you know, a little homage to <laughs> Troy. <laughs> That's the bomb. And um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, you know, we went out and in, into the neighborhoods and in, in this um, area and shared the gospel. And then uh, we met with one of the guys you'll hear about later. And he had shared the gospel three or four times since then. And and because we were just Chuck was kind of doing the three thirds with him. And, and he, so he, he turned to me and he goes, how many times have you shared the gospel? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> So I got busy and started sharing the gospel again. Uh, so, um, yeah, and, and I, I feel like, you know, like in the word, and because of 18, 18 is genius with this, because I know there's that, those gals are going to be asking me, look at me now, I'm all going, what is God teaching you? What have you done? Mm-hmm. So um, I <laughs> we make it a practice to be quick to obey most of the time, because I know I'm going to have to answer to my to my uh, friends, and and I'm gonna have to be honest, or I have to tell them my lies. <laughs> you know, we got time for that. <laughs> Thanks, Deb. Yeah, um, going to John 13 and 14, it really strikes me how secure Jesus is in his identity. You know, and and he is so in sync with the Father. He can say things like, uh, have you not seen that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? How can you say, show us the Father? And um, that's really uh, resonating with me. You know, know who you are in Christ. And so um, that's that's been very good. The other thing, John 13, serve your people, you know, that he served them. Uh, And so that's, you know, the kind of the mantra, you know, serve the disciples. So it's been good. And there have been times I don't want to serve, you know, I'd rather do something else. So, All right. Uh, Let's see. Would you guys – Say something about how you think your marriage is going. Deb? Always good. I, I, I'm like, I can't believe, yeah, I get to be married to this guy. It's amazing. <laughs> I can't believe you like that. If yeah. anybody watches this video, well, they're going to go, that's so, so cheesy. But, you know, I, I, literally, <laughs> yesterday we were talking about this, and I'm like, you know, I wonder if we should have more accountability. But it's like things are – going so well i mean with our relationship that i guess it would be good if people are asking us questions and stuff i mean i know that we need that from time to time but Mm -hmm. um yeah i feel like all of our issues are external you know not inside the family but outside the family which is nice i think that answers it has been answering our prayers or that they're physical and not emotional you know yeah And, oh, you know, they're remodeling our bathroom right now to make it ADA compliant. And that brings a certain amount of stress. So, you know, 
we will get stressed out, but we're quick to reconcile, <laughs> you know. And, yeah, I ain't the one to get stressed out. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's, there's tension, but uh, we're quick to iron those things out. Yeah, and we did have something recently when we were out, uh, when we were traveling, we kind of had a pretty frank discussion about, you know, some things and some hurt feelings. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like most of the time things are going well, but if they aren't, we'll sit down and talk about it, you know. And uh, so, yeah. and, and Chuck is super forbearing. I mean, it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, honey, you tell me what I'm messing up, okay? Love, love, love. <laughs> All right, before you guys make me cry, uh, <laughs> let's move on to another topic. Uh, I'm not a crier, but... Uh, Get a room. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's super encouraging. Yeah, I'm not going to cry, but I might take my wife into the next room. So. <laughs> hey, in your 50s, man. Get your reps. Yeah, that's great. I, I, I think reps. I experienced a lot of um, couples your age who don't who say the other opposite about their marriage. So that's just super encouraging um, to hear that. And this example you guys set for all of us. So thanks. Um, 